Good morning, folks. Kicking off here with a beast of a plasma filament on the sun, dancing about. Got a lot of space news to cover today, so let's jump right in, starting at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star with the small and patchy coronal hole just south of the equator, center longitude. The active regions have indeed either departed the Earth-facing disk or decayed, but surface active areas exist, and with filaments dancing, it's ripe for more sunspot production this weekend. The solar wind is calm. We've seen variability the last few days, but all within that calm and quiet range. Geomagnetic conditions doing its copycat routine, calm and quiet on the KP. Okay, so let's jump right out to space, and the European Southern Observatory, working with ALMA, have mapped phosphorus, an essential life ingredient on this planet, and done so at both great distance and for the comet 67P. To see the wonderful journey and different experiences phosphorus has in the cosmos, see the excellent article and videos with it. And speaking of life, BPA plastic is detrimental over generational scales, it's been confirmed, from the heart function to cellular activity to the basic electrical conductivity of your body as a whole and, in segments, it's bad. And by the way, they are pretty solidly discovering that BPS, the supposed great replacement for BPA, just as bad, if not worse. So as we thank the life molecule phosphorus for giving us an opportunity to make fun of plastic, up next let's watch a jab from a Korea-China collaboration, and while phenomenologically emergent dark energy models probably are not the finish line at the end of the cosmology race, they are certainly better than this snipe hunt for dark matter, which is basically what this paper is saying. Now we're sticking with cosmology, but we are going to take quite the winding dirt road on this one. So Orion, gorgeous molecular clouds, dust, plasma, gas, and stars, stars at all stages. Now what's fascinating is how they are describing these coherent structures they've found. They're blobs of gas and other material that basically have protostars embedded within them, indicating they're on the verge of stellar ignition. Well folks, does that description and their actual images of the blobs look anything like the blobs we heard about yesterday at the Galactic Center? You know, the ones that looked like gas but act like stars? Could G objects be protostars near the intergalactic core? Could it be arrested development of that material as it enters the environment of the galactic nucleus? Maybe we should try to find these things in other parts of the cosmos too. Sophia would be perfect for that, but alas, she's kind of got a bigger job right now. Stepping back from her revolutionizing molecular cloud and star formation science, she also provides numerous wider field surveys in the infrared, like these of the Milky Way. And by the way, I had known of the pistol feature, but not that it was connected to the larger hole by a spiraling helix. Electromagnetic much? Now the top cosmological study of the day accidentally explained the last piece of the galactic rotation problem, and they used quasar systems to do it. So let's review the last two years of discoveries at this galactic level. The galaxy doesn't end with the stars, but vast halos of material surround them. They mostly thought they were dark matter. But the lost light of Hubble discovery found that these halos are much more enormous and almost big enough to explain the missing mass they've been looking for, and it's not dark matter, it's normal, luminous matter they just missed before. Then Caltech and Keck showed that not only is the massive halo co-rotating with the galaxy as one coherent system, but it's fed from the cosmic web filaments that spiral, twist, and vortex helix electromagnetically feeding the galaxies. And the final piece here today, we are finally there, those halo regions may be indistinguishable from the larger intergalactic medium. They found a region of much more pristine gas around the circumgalactic medium, and if they are correct about its accretion from the intergalactic space, then there is actually no separation of material. One galaxy eventually bleeds into another at distance, connecting everything and meaning that there are no islands in space, and no dark matter either. Last but not least, what a fantastic play by these scientists to not only up their game in data analysis, but to find exactly what we've been expecting were they to do so. Sure, they are learning more about the great extinctions in the history of the planet, but they can expressly now target information on the shorter and smaller ones. Their best quote is that, yeah, it may have been a bad hundred thousand years, or maybe just one bad week. Now we're talking. Because about every twelve thousand years or so, one such event comes to Earth. Gothenburg, 12,000 years ago, Lake Mungo, 24,000 years ago, Mono Lake and Lachamp covering the 35 to 48 to 50,000 year range, one at 60,000 from Vostok in the Toba event 72,000 years ago. Here, 
12,000 years from the last one, Earth's magnetic field is already changing like it hasn't in thousands of years, and it's not just us. The entire solar system is changing. The planets are demonstrating magnetic changes. We were challenged to look at the closest stars to ours and found them to be triggered in a line, heading at the sun from the center of the galaxy, and indeed, as astronomers know, we are entering what we likely think is the galactic trigger for these events. The last in line after the other stars and our own planets is the sun, solar micronova. We greatly appreciate your support. Cosmology, catastrophe, climate change, electroquake prediction. Find it all at those links in the description box down below the video. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.